What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Damn. So in the past vlog, if you guys watched that, I spoke about the restrictions that are placed on businesses such as Union Martial Arts were going to be lifted and we can start increasing the class sizes and... Peel Region Health Unit will move to the red control level. That happened. So we're kind of stuck in the same boat, uh, but it's not going to stop us from going forward, rebuilding, uh, preparing for 2021. And actually tonight is a very special class that hopefully I can take you guys through as much as possible um, with still having you know the respect to privacy in mind. But my instructor, Grand Maestro Roldy, will be teaching a Kun Tao seminar uh, for my youth students or some of my youth students as well as my adult students. Uh, we are still at a capacity of 10 people. Uh, so it'll be a, a small intimate class, but it'll be great for some of the beginner students to finally meet him and learn from essentially the man who, who gave me the opportunity to become who I am. And um, it's going to be a good time for everyone. Um, uh, you know, for what my instructor can do cannot be justified into words. And um, I'm just super excited to train with him again. I'm super excited to see the students train with him again or for the first time. Now, one thing on my agenda is um, I have decided that I am going to continue improving the gym as I spoke about in the last vlog. And I've got two swatches here uh, for basically uh, vinyl blackout roller shades. And I plan to put it on all of these windows here. So we have like, I think it's nine. Uh, three, six, eight, nine, ten. So we got we got ten of them to put on, and I'm kind of at a cross between gray or white. So comment below, guys. Let me know. I'm leaning towards the white. Uh, white will essentially get. Oh, you can't really tell right now. Well, let me turn on the lights here. But white will essentially almost like bounce the lights off. It'll, uh, you'll see a lot better when you know it's nighttime in here. The gray is cool because the gray actually uh, is fairly close to the wall and uh, it would give you know like a good theme, but I think at that point it's gonna be too much gray. So I think I'll lean on the white. And the reason why I wanna get that is so, well, a couple things, not just for privacy, um, especially when we have like seminars or events going on, in the near future uh, but as you can see right now it's about uh, 3 43 in the afternoon the sun is starting to set but we do get a lot of light exposure in the academy so saturday mornings i'm here first class is at 10 a.m and the light is literally beaming through the windows onto the mats up until maybe like this point so i'm almost like three quarters through the length of the mats or yeah, the length of the mats. And it's so bright that students can't sit down and watch me teach because I usually teach from this section right here, right? So literally just underneath this TV here, this is where I'd be teaching. So I have an outlook of the entire gym. This is pretty much my perspective when I teach, but I'd have to flip it because the light is just too bright. Also at nighttime, uh, we have a bunch of parking spots outside that wrap from this side of the gym to this side over here. And most of the time, parents will park here and they'll point their cars forward so they can watch inside. Because right now we aren't allowed to have um, spectators. So they'll watch from there. But as it gets colder, they keep their cars on, keep the heater on. Terrible for the environment, I know. But the lights beam through. So literally, if we're sitting down like this, the light is coming directly into my eyes. It's like perfect alignment. And so I have students sitting down like this, and I always ask them if they have a question, and they say, no, sir, my, it's just really, really bright. So in order to, because obviously the climate is not going to change, and you know that will always be a thing as long as we're here. In order to combat that, um, I figured it's good to get some blackout shades and be able to uh, close that down during the evening classes if we want to, or even for the morning classes so that we can just train properly and maximize all the space that we can. So uh, that plus uh, doing a little bit of work. The only thing I've really done since the last vlog was add this curtain here for a little bit more of a cleanly feel. What I am gonna put back here is, this is going to be 
the Anastasio Kali Union Apparel uh, warehouse. And so I'm going to take all of this out, all of this crud over here, change this to a work desk, have a little setup monitor for our ship station, um, wire racks on the top here so we can continue to store more things, whether it's for shipping or it's actual apparel or even like, um, you know, we, we keep a decent amount of white belts, different colored belts for promotions and whatnot. Uh, but that is essentially going to be the, the workstation over there. Um, and a lot of stuff, right? Just the path of making this place a very boutique style, high level um, martial arts studio. I think that's the route I want to go for the next couple of years instead of expanding and, you know, teaching a class of 40, 50 students. Um, have a space that I teach, you know, 18 to 20 students and make it very intimate, make it very personal and really, really, really give that top level experience that is possible because of the student to instructor ratio. Um, and I honestly, I think that's the direction that even like fitness is going to be taking in the next couple of years because of how hard COVID has hit so many other businesses. So that, of course, all the online stuff that I want to do with you guys. So I get to play around a little bit more. So, yeah. For the next couple hours, got to do some more editing because we are approaching the 18th, which is going to be when the cycle resets for all of our online lessons. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that as well as um, working on some back end things because the 18th also marks the one year anniversary of Anastasio Kali. So it's crazy how it's always it's it's crazy how it's already been a year as crazy as as the the year has been. Time does fly, so we got a couple of cool things to show our appreciation to you guys that uh, continue to support on YouTube, continue to support uh, by being a member of Anastasio Kali and, and any, anything else that you guys follow us on our social media and, um, and all that good stuff. Guys, it is Monday here at the Academy. Um, I got some updating for you guys, unfortunately bad news. But before we get to that, I wanted to leave you guys with some technique in this video. And that is my personal uh, warm up drills that I like doing um, when it comes to solo training. So obviously, you know, you could partner up with someone and warm up some reflexes. You can use a bag to practice your targets, but uh, especially given some conditions, um, you know, sometimes it's good to stray away from your 10 basic strikes, your umbrella blocks, your, your triangular footwork. Though that is a good warm-up, uh, just to get creative with it and just start to manipulate the stick and get comfortable with it. So I actually spoke about this to my elite students this past weekend on our exclusive live class. And uh, the comparison I drew was like, you know, every high performance athlete, they do workouts or techniques, not sorry, not techniques, they do drills. Uh, and sequences of movements that may not necessarily be directly incorporated into their actual application. So for instance, boxers, kickboxers, you know, um, a lot of combat sport athletes still do jump rope. And it, you're not, they're not gonna jump rope on the spot, but that you know, hand and foot coordination, that stamina, the ability to keep rhythm, um, being to be light on your toes, all that stuff, that, those are attributes that you can take into combat, into uh, sparring into day-to-day -day training that you may not necessarily do in the uh, you know the book of techniques so a lot of the times I do these stick manipulations to get familiar with my stick and I think the biggest misconception that people have is that people think that you need to train one thing 
for instance, a stick, and then you'll be able to use everything, a sword, uh, a lightsaber, a uh, baton, a, a metal pole, so on and so forth. And while that's true to a certain degree in terms of gross motor skills, to get truly proficient with a weapon, I think you have to know what exactly that weapon is. And there's weight differences, uh, length differences, uh, width differences in each stick that you use. And I'm sure if you guys have a bunch of sticks at home, then you can kind of tell the difference and you kind of have that go-to, you have that heavy hitter, you have that light manipulation stick for tricks, I don't know. So it's important to just get familiar with it before you decide to start training something and so precise that uh, would be something like the AKA curriculum. So here we go. First one I like to do, obviously, is like to twirl a stick, just get it familiar in my hand, get the weight down. I usually do combinations, so once up, sorry, once down, once up, or I like to do twice down, once up. I did a video on this a while back. You really wanna be able to use the momentum to aid you, not necessarily open up your hand, but not super tense grip either. And if you want 10 twirls going down, you're gonna get 10 twirls. Don't just get whatever you can uh, from the bottom going back up. Uh, the second one I like to do is what we call back chambers. This is a very common position for tabak toyok or nunchucks. So basically you're gonna be letting go from the top, passing it off to the other side. And the most important drill when you do this, or rather the most important factor is that you wanna make sure that you're not looking for it. So I'm not looking down, trying to grab it. I'm really just going off of feel. And when I go off of feel, I know where the stick's gonna be and I'm working on my sensitivity once again. So I'm working on how high I need to bring my arm, how tight it needs to go behind my shoulder, how far down I need to grab with my uh, opposite hand, and then letting all of that kind of come into play and let my body do the entire work when I do that. Okay, so that's our back chambers. Then I like to do horizontal chambers, which is in front. And same concept, but in a different angle. I'm going to point the stick towards my chest. I'm gonna invert it, grab over with the other side, and reach over. And I really like this one because now this teaches me the length of my stick. And I can do this without being hesitant or feeling like I'm gonna thrust into my body like that. And so now I know exactly what my weapon is going to be able to hit in terms of distance when I'm playing Largo, when I'm doing uh, you know entries into disarms, into grappling with the stick, I can start to understand my range a little bit more because I'm more accustomed to my weapon. Uh, these ones are a little bit more fun to play with now. We're gonna do what's called like an inverted chamber. So you can twirl to get into that. Basically, you're gonna put it into your armpit and then you're gonna pinch down with your elbow. So now I'm going to work on the sensitivity of connection. And once I get that, I pin that down I'm gonna release with my live hand, switch off to my secondary hand, which is currently my left hand, unpinch, and bring it to the other side. So it's a nice and light drill that I like to do just to get familiar with manipulating the stick around my body. And I almost want it to be like a smooth pass off. I don't want it to pinch, grab, let go in a very sticky motion. I want it to be nice and smooth, nice and smooth as I do this. So I can understand how I can go from different sensitivities and not necessarily have to stop, right? You take that a step higher, we rotate that in, pass it off. This time when we do it, you're going to pass it off to the same hand, but you're gonna invert the grip. You're gonna come across in like a diet, or sorry, a horizontal slash and a pakal grip. Feed it off without losing any of that connection. That's a barao or knife principle that we use here in Anastasio Kali. And then you repeat it on the other side. So pitch. Reverse grip or pakal grip, horizontal slash from the elbow, feed it down, twirl it right into the hand, and then you have that concept right there. And then the last one I like doing, if I am gonna do some groundwork, if I am gonna do some knee on belly, uh, some instances where I need to free my hands again, I'll go down in a kneeling position, I'll take the stick again without looking, going from the outside, pinching it inside my knee so my hands can be free here, releasing it when I grab it with my opposite hand, and repeat. So it's almost like a an undercross but instead of a basketball. It's my stick. So there's two ways you can do that. You can lean forward or as you insert it, you can pull your foot back and pinch it coming towards your body. And then you can release and repeat that process. All right, and you make sure you do that with both legs. All right guys, update time. So I apologize, this vlog has been all over the place and I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of technique because I do want to still incorporate technique in these videos um, and just kind of have a balance. But it is Monday and um, on Friday, it was announced that Peel Region, which is where Union Martial Arts is located, will be moving to the highest restriction of uh, 
life, which is the lockdown. So um, unfortunately, the gym has to temporarily close its doors for a minimum of 28 days. And uh, this one kind of hurt a little more, guys. Like the first one hurt business wise. The world kind of you know stopped turning for a second and everything went to shits. And um, now I'm not so worried about you know the immediate effect that that students are going to be worried because I think the the world is a little bit more prepared and we're just kind of expecting this. I'm worried about the after effects and you know losing the momentum that a lot of people you know, unconsciously rely on when it comes to training. It's hard to get your foot in the door, but once you're in and once you're coming week to week, it's kind of like second nature to you. And speaking as an instructor, not as a business owner, I just, you know, for the students that are, are with me right now, um, that are absolute ride or dies, so shout out to them. But for them, like, I, I just honestly love my students and they're like my family to me. And it just, it hurts me because I, see them work so hard and I see them abide by all of the rules that are placed on us and martial arts can be so much more gratifying at the full effect but you know they still want to train they still want to give every little ounce of themselves to be able to participate even at like a tenth of a degree and some of them have been working super hard for gradings uh, that are now cancelled um, and honestly like you can really see the progression through certain students that continue to train even through the lockdowns even through the restrictions even through uh life changes that have happened to them and i just feel really bad that you know this has to happen so i'm actually only here to teach my virtual classes um, that we've been able to uh convert to for the 28 days that we're going to be locked down and yeah it just sucks it just sucks because you know the gym was picking momentum up again um you know, we were kind of in our groove, we follow all the rules and I'm not, again, I'm not here to say, you know, my right or wrong and that I know more than public health and all that stuff. It just sucks because, you know, if anything, gyms, especially like Union Martial Arts, it's one of the safest places. Um, zero transmission. I think gyms made up like 0.3% of all transmissions in Canada, which is crazy. Because, um, you know, this is like our livelihood. We're not, we're not messing around. We're not trying to stuff people in here we're trying to better people's lives we're trying to um you know make a difference for people and, and do it in the way that we know by sharing the arts that we love but um with that being said guys i want to thank you guys for watching the video in the next 28 days i'm going to be pumping out more content because um obviously i'm not going to be on the mats as often so i don't want to spend these 28 days moping around i don't want to uh, make excuses and uh, to be a step behind when this lockdown is finished so I'm gonna continue making more videos for you guys I'm gonna take content from my earlier days um, skipping across different lessons and, and drills that I could teach you guys and honestly all you need is a stick or a substitute no mats no punching bag no partner and hopefully if you guys are in a similar situation you guys can train at home um, and you guys you know hopefully build motivation or even like a passion towards fitness or martial arts so that uh, when things do get better, because they will get better, you'll be able to take that step early on and, and start your, you know, your 2021 on, on a good foot and just carry through that momentum that you're building right now. So uh, I want to thank you guys for watching again. If you did enjoy the video and if you continue to want to watch more uh, martial arts content, some more business content, some uh, lockdown content, make sure you guys subscribe and make sure that you guys uh, give this video a thumbs up. I truly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.